to another episode of Card Talk, a podcast where we spend a little bit of time talking about cards from Lord of the Rings Card Game. I'm your host, Dave Walsh. And I'm Grant Thompson, just along for the ride. And I'm Ted Bannock. I, I love I love everything. I just I love talking about cards. <laughs> I love Couples February. I love the guests that we have. It's going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be great, right? <laughs> you know what else you love, Ted? I love thanking the patrons. You do God love me, thanking do. those patrons. <laughs> A uh, quick shout out to, uh, I'm going to run through the whole list here. We got Sean, Robert, Rob, Phil, Dominic, Mike, Lewis, Kyle, Joseph, David, and Daniel. Thanks, guys. They're they're pretty awesome. But, they're, they're stellar. But you know who is really awesome as well? Our esteemed guests today. Our esteemed guests. So um, I wanted to come up with some sort of grandiose introduction for um, the this couple. So this is why they fit into the show. There's, there's a podcast out um, about Tolkien's Legendarium, the whole thing, not just Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, but it's called the, um, but about the whole Legendarium. And um, it's hosted by John and Greta Carswell, and they are married. They host an awesome podcast called the Tolkien Road Podcast, and I've been listening to them for, um, I've listened to their whole catalog of episodes, and they're awesome. So I would, I'm so thank, it's just amazing to even see them on the show. So um, John and Greta, um, thank you for coming on to Card Talk. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. We're super soaked to be here. <laughs> yeah. Not soaked, stoked. That's soaked. I meant to say I meant to say stoked. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, in one of the outtakes I did call him Tolkien instead of Tolkien, right? But that's okay. We, it's fine. But I think uh, both are fine. Yeah. It, it, t Tolkien always makes you feel like I, you know, I I'm not super uh, hardcore about pronouncing the Tolkien perfectly all the time. Right. Um, but you know, he he's because he's a linguist, you you know you're always a little more sensitive when it comes to when you're talking about him about making sure you pronounce things right. <laughs> I know I found that, that yeah. um, and I found that exactly happening. Uh, you know, with um, you guys for a long time called it a feel and not a file, right? Like uh, yes. as part of your podcast. Like I, I mean, I'm I'm probably talking a hundred episodes ago, but you know, anyways, it was it was kind of interesting, and I'm like I, but. Nonetheless, he got corrected there, and I was fine, and it was good. But um, we get corrected all the time. Yes. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. it's all good. <laughs> it is all good, and we, that's why we need our listeners. Right, <laughs> keep us right. straight. Honestly, right. And for me, that's fine. I'm. I know what it's like to host a podcast, so I'm never going to correct you about those sorts of things. Um, I get the idea, and that's the that's the bigger issue for me. Amen. So, yes. <laughs> um, I wanted to spend just a little bit of time getting to know. Our host, but I did also want to say that I was how I found them, and I highly recommend them for anybody in the LCG community that just needs um, some good information about Tolkien's Legendarium. Um, I actually was done listening to all the back episodes of all um, of all the community podcasts, including some of the other podcasts that um, the community put out, like Cardboard of the Rings and Grey Company, and I listened to them a couple of times, and I was really dying to find um, some really um, good podcast about Lord of the Rings and the stories that are contained, not just in The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, but also the whole thing, including the Cimmerillion and even Tolkien's other works, Leaf by Niggle and things like that. So um, I stumbled on the Tolkien Road, quite accidentally because i guess when you guys started funny story right you weren't the tolkien road and then you had to change your right. name but mm -hmm. um you know but now they're the tolkien road and it's just amazing so and i binge listened to your episodes more than i've done any other podcast because it's just phenomenal it's super wow. easy wow, to listen thanks. to so thank you so much <laughs> yeah, yeah thank you um so how did you guys get started with that podcast wow um you want me to tell yeah, the story? Yeah, I'm gonna say it. Yeah, you take it. All right. So, um, Tolkien is uh, Tolkien has been near and dear to my heart. I, by the way, I'm from. I live in Tennessee, so that's why I I don't try hard to say it Tolkien. I say it. I say it Tolkien because I'm just like he's Tolkien to me. As long, um, <laughs> as long as you don't say it Tolkus, I'm sure that right. it's fine, right? <laughs> this is true. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yes. Um, so uh, Tolkien has always been has been uh, near and dear to my heart for uh, many years, and really it all began with uh, seeing the uh, the first 
Peter Jackson, Lord of the Rings film back in 2001 and really falling in love with this world that I was seeing on screen. And it, um, it just, by the time the second movie had come out a year later, I had read the Lord of the Rings twice and, and I just loved what this man Tolkien was doing in his works. I, um, I, I'd, I'd never read anything like it. And I was, I was deeply impressed and enchanted by the verisimilitude of the world he created. Like this, this sense of, it's a, you know, thousand dollar term for like, wow, it's, it just seems real. It seems like a world you could step into and become a part of. And, um, so fast forward several years, uh, later round about, uh, uh, mid 2014, I started, I was just like, I, I had actually, uh, let me give a shout out. I'd actually been listening to another Tolkien podcast, kind of the, the, the OG of Tolkien podcast, uh, the Tolkien professor. professor right? And, um, uh, and I'd been listening to him for a few years and really enjoyed it. And I was like, but, but I also just had some things I wanted to say myself and, you know, about Tolkien because of, uh, you know, just different, everybody has different, you know, brings a different perspective and brings, you know, different insights that they want to share. And so I, um, <clears throat> I wanted, I, I had just finished a master's degree where I'd focused a lot on, uh, on Tolkien. And, um, and so I wanted to kind of continue doing that and have a, a way of, you know, keeping myself honest on continuing to do it. Right. So it's like, I'll start a podcast and po I like podcasts. Podcasts seem like they're fun. And then I was like, and I'll have, uh, I'll have, you know, it'd be great to have a co-host cause I don't like the idea of just kind of being a blah, blah, blah monologue. So I think I'm going to see if my wife wants to join me because she's the easiest person to get to join me on a regular basis. Um, <laughs> Since we live you, together, you, since, you yeah. all, since there's three of you, you know the difficulties of right. trying to arrange schedules and all that kind of stuff. So, Absolutely. Um, so I was like, "Well, uh, hey, hey, honey, this will be fun, right? You want to mm -hmm. do a podcast with me on Tolkien?" And 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 she was like, "Okay, maybe." And I was like, "Well, you know, uh, what I'm really asking is that I need you to be on there because it'll make me look smart, really smart, <laughs> because you know, you know, sure. you don't know nearly as much about Tolkien as I do. So it's like." I'll be that's Mr. Why, Miyagi, and you can be Daniel San. That, that's so. why Ted and Grant wanted mm -hmm. me on the show is to make <laughs> them <laughs> to make them look smart. Like I don't, I don't, I I just host. I don't know anything about this. Well, Greta, how did you get? I mean, I see, I hear what John is saying about you getting roped in because he's your husband. But like, what's sure. your take on the whole thing? Like, uh, I mean, yeah, that's a that's actually a really good question. Um, when he first kind of asked me about it. I was a little taken aback. Um, first of all, because I'm not like I read The Hobbit a, mm -hmm. a couple times. I've read the trilogy. I've seen the movie. You know, I'd seen the mm -hmm. movies that had come out. But it wasn't like I, I mean, I enjoyed the books, but it wasn't, you know, they didn't affect me the way they affected him. They didn't mm -hmm. mean as much. You know, I have my own authors that I'm, you know, that probably affect me the way that he that Tolkien affects him. But um, I was a little taken aback, but I was like, eh, you know, it's not going to hurt to try. Um, so we just kind of started off real, you know, real, real set up very slow pace. And, you know, we were very clear. Like, I, I think I had some very clear ground rules from the beginning. And I said, I'm, I'm just doing my reading and showing up. Like, that's it. I'm not doing any of the prep. I'm not doing any of the editing. I'm not doing any of the hard stuff. I'm no. just, I'm along for the ride. So, um, see Grant, there's another, yeah. but seems to be common, right? <laughs> it's a good deal. It's right. a good deal. Right. Um, and to be honest, when we started it, I was kind of like, you know, I mean, John's kind of, a, he's a bit of a Renaissance man. He's got lots of little hobbies and, you know, th um, different interests that he, that he's actually, you know, very talented in many different areas. And so I, um, I kind of figured, oh, this will be like a, I don't know, we might do 10 episodes and then he's going to find something else he'll want to <laughs> do. <laughs> so if you would have told me that we would be doing this for five years and almost 200 episodes, I would have been like, shut up. There's no way. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just kind of in shock that we're still doing this. And I'm just thrilled and honored that we have so many people out there that care about what we uh, have to say about Tolkien. It's just, it's, it's really become a lot of fun. It's always an honor to like, um, to meet somebody like yourself, David, and, yes. um, and, and just to hear from somebody how they've been engaged with the podcast. And, um, <laughs> you know, it is funny like to hear when people, cause I know it, I, cause I've, I listen to other podcasts. I listen, you know, other shows and you, you, you start to bench something and then you feel like, you know, that you, you feel like, you know, right. that person. And, right. um, uh, and, and, and that's, to me, that's kind of a cool, like really beautiful thing. You know, totally. it's like, yeah. it'd be awesome <laughs> if we could get like, know the people who are listening as well, you know, as, 
they get to know us, mm-hmm. right? And right. we, we yeah. you know, we strive totally. to do that a little bit and like mm-hmm. you know have some have some community there and everything. But the thing that distinguished me, like that I really wanted to do with the podcast, I guess overall was to go um, chapter by chapter through Tolkien's works, and because to me he put enough detail into his storytelling that they warranted that. And what we found is that there's actually some chapters that end up taking three or four episodes um, because there's so much. To, and then even then you feel like you're giving it short shrift. Right. There's just so much in them. Yeah. That's yeah. the beauty of Tolkien's work, that no matter how many times you go back to read or to look at certain chapters, you always find something that intrigues you that little bit more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Yeah, yeah. we're actually, um, I'm actually... Much, much to my chagrin, our our, uh, our three children uh, are are not quite the the Tolkien nerds that I am. So and they, they take actually, after me. They, they've seen the movies <laughs> and everything, and they've and the older ones have read The Hobbit, but they have not. Um, uh, they have not actually sat down and read the, read the Lord of the Rings. So I'm like, I put my foot down recently, and I'm like, I'm going to read Lord of the Rings to you all. And you're gonna like it. So, <laughs> yeah, We're, we'll we'll get through it eventually. It's slow going right now, but it's a long haul. It just requires perseverance. Mm-hmm. You just gotta persevere. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And, and if there's one yeah. thing you can do that that older folks can do with their kids is out persevere them. <laughs> that is that is true. That is absolutely true. Yes. Yes. And it's and it's and it's interesting because you guys you're podcasters and you've been around for longer than longer than Card Talk has been but you know you kind of do the same things you have Patreons and and people who support the show and actually one of the things that I wanted to make sure that I told you especially on air just in case your um your Patreons are listening to this show is that um I picked up on this idea solely because of the episode where one of your patrons was on the show and he was talking about like, Oh, I play this other, it was just like a throw off statement. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, Hey, I play this show, play this game too. And I was like, Oh, I wonder if the Carswells know anything <laughs> about the, about this game, you know, or at least have enough interest peak that they would come on the show. And so then, so, so I have to, I have to give a little bit of a shout out for you guys on the show to your, um, your, your patron, uh, Dr. William Hutton. So, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. And you know, he's, he's a, he's been a long time listener and, and correspondent yeah. with us. And what's really funny is John actually started calling him Dr. William Hutton before he was actually even a doctor. And before we even knew that he was pursuing a doctorate, which is actually really funny to me. Like, it's like you, you saw the future and you were just like, Oh, this guy needs a little bit I, of a nickname. So I just we're thought just going to put a doctor in front of this. Yes. Name. Especially early on. Like we were giving like uh, the people who corresponded with us early on when he started to find us, we were like just giving them kind of spontaneous uh, nicknames. And yeah, so he, I just deemed him Dr. William Hutton uh, yeah. for whatever reason. I have no idea why, but it turns out, uh, he's actually a, a doctor he now, not, not an MD, but a, a PhD. He's a PhD, yeah. right? right. Yeah. So. <laughs> It'd be interesting if his his name his his friends called him Bubba or something, right? Like know, some, right? something like completely something. opposite of formal, right? He actually goes by Fatty, right? <laughs> forget 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 Fredegar, right? Right. <laughs> um, um, but so before we get into all this stuff, some of the, some of the people, like if, if anybody from your podcast is watching this, or if any of uh, uh, my viewers or my watchers are probably like, what the heck is going on here? But, um, I wanted to, to say that the reason why we like doing these shows where it's not just us talking about cards is because I think like knowing about the, the lore of Tolkien, especially when you're playing this game, like people really want to have that. So if that can kind of frame this, like, I don't want you to f- feel like, you know, this is some like, like I'm super serious when I, when I ask these questions, because I want to know about this stuff. And Ted is, is also interested about all of these things. And Grant is actually our resident lore nerd about the game. Anytime we have a question about the lore, I'm like, Grant, what do we do? And he's like, well, and it's not just because he's English. It's because he has, he's like, he's like, all well, that is this. a big part of it. Yes. Yes. Well, right. It's always L- it's, large. It's a large part. Of large it. part. Right. Yeah. Um, but one of the, one of the things that I wanted to do before I got into this is just say that I always, um, I always, I don't always, I just came up with this um, metaphor 
a little while ago and I was like, ah, oh, this is exactly what it is, is that like the books are like the men of Tolkien. They have a finite life when you when you put the when you have men like they're going to live for you know, 80 years, or if they're, you know, if they're Numenorean, they're going to, the Edain, or the, they're going to live for 300, whatever it is, but it's finite. Once you're done, you close the book, it's done and over with. But this game is awesome because it's like the elves of Middle Earth, because you can pick up the game and you can continually play something slightly different every time you play it. And you can play through the the books and through the mm. through the Hobbit, through the Lord of the Rings, and you can play it slightly different. You can take different characters through the game, and that to me is really interesting. So it kind of makes like the game like elves; they, it just lives mm -hmm. forever. The game is yeah. is Tolkien living forever for me, and so I thought yeah. that you guys could appreciate that sort totally, of comparison. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, um, like I said, one of the wonderful things that drew me into Tolkien, Tolkien's stories in the first place was um the verisimilitude of this creation this, this this world feels like you can step into it and become a part of it yourself and every rock that you pass by in the stories feels like a rock that you could look under and find something really cool yeah. you just don't have the time to do it all right there right? right and um but with i totally get it like with the game yeah there's you can kind of engage in that immersiveness and and you can take time to look under <laughs> look around the corner you know that you may not have looked around in the book yeah and and yeah to be yeah. to be real like I, we've had the cre the creator of the or the developer of the game has been on the show several cool. times and so like i would say and grant ted you can bet ted you probably know caleb better than all of us but you know, like Caleb really is a guy that cares about the the property, like the story of like it's so meaningful to it's not it's not just some guy behind a desk doing something for money. Like he hmm. loves this and you can tell by all the, the the work that he puts into it. And so Ted, do you think that that's a fair assumption? Like Yeah, definitely a fair statement. All the people that are involved in uh, in creating the game and all the players too. Like it, the, the players, it starts with the foundation of like, you know, you're a token fan, you know, that's always the driving force. And it's uh, just like uh, you said, John, it's, it lets us, the game lets us engage into the world. Um, yeah. So it's, let's just, it really scratches that itch. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's good. That's good to hear. He, you know, he's not, he, he wasn't just, um, being like, oh, I got this, I got this license, cha-ching, you know, like I can yeah. license this brand name, cha-ching, you know, and do my own thing. That's, yeah, that's, that's what you'd want to see. And, you know, somebody who's developing something like this. And actually, yeah. if I can just take that one step further, just for anybody listening out there, actually, not only did the creators of the game and the subsequent designers have a love for it, but also like the boss of the company had a heartfelt Christian Peterson, who was the boss of Fantasy Flight Games, like he loved Lord of the Rings as well. I've never, I've not mm -hmm. talked to him about this, but I have it on good authority that, like, so like, there's some really caring hands taking care of this, which I think, you know, when you think about um, Latron Prime, right? I'll use your <laughs> right? right. When you think about, yeah. you know, the reluctance of the Tolkien estate to give up the, the, the 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 rights right. to do the yeah 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 you know like they just want it to be in caring hands you know what i mean yes. so i think that yeah. there's there's a lot of respect to this sort of thing so cool um well that said i want to get into some of the stuff that you guys are experts on um and then um and of course ted and grant are going to pop in whenever they have questions or anything um but I do have to say that the that the stuff that that the game is licensed for, and this is some of the legal stuff, is that it was it's really just licensed for Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, so they really can't mm -hmm. touch any of that stuff that John and Greta, you guys love to talk about with the Cimmerillion. Okay. Although there are some callbacks to that because of the of the appendices that they have rights to. So, sure, sure, okay. Um, so a lot of the questions really stem from that you know, kind of the yeah. low hanging fruit of that. Right. Cause those are two different. I, 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 fe I feel like I feel scared all of a sudden because I'm like, Oh, low hanging fruit. I'm like, do I know all this stuff? Well, no, no. It's... <laughs> You're being Don't set up. You. <laughs> right. <laughs> when David asks me a question on the law and it's like, do I actually know this one? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> have to have to keep up appearances. Uh Oh, uh oh, right. Uh, no, you know, it's funny because, um, because like, I feel like, um, 
you know, I, I have never considered myself. Uh, I mean, thank you for calling calling us experts, but I've never considered I'm definitely us not experts. an expert. But and, 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 um, and, and not to get, not to like belabor that point too much, but the, like one of the wonderful things about Tolkien fandom is that there are people who have been lifelong fans, you know, who since the books came out in the early fifties and, you know, uh, we have some of our, a few of a few listeners who correspond with us frequently, whose knowledge of Tolkien lore is, I mean, they can just rattle off anything like, mm. you know, and I'm, I'm like, I still have to go back and look up certain, like a lot of stuff, you know, and when they, when things happened and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah. So anyway, just well, a little, just well, a little disclaimer. A, there. Yeah, disclaimer. <laughs> yes. Well, I guess uh, to, 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 to alleviate any concerns when I say low hanging fruit, it's the most popular stuff is what we're talking about. Right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. when we talk about dwarves, everybody knows what we're talking what, about. What's a know? dwarf? Yeah. <laughs> Right, well, uh, the, right. I yeah. I don't even the know. Tall, skinny just, ones, right? Those right, are the yeah. Yes. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, the tall, yeah. skinny ones with the pointy the, the ears. The Orlando Bloom characters. Yes, yeah. the, yes, right. yes. Right. And, <laughs> and Arwen, I think, is one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe cured in the ship, right? Also, because he's got a, he's got a beard, right? Um, exactly. <laughs> Um, but let's let's get a little bit into this. And I didn't know exactly how you wanted to necessarily do this, but the time of this game is supposed to be set between what happens in The Hobbit after they get back from Erebor and do whatever they do to Smog and stuff like that, and then before the Lord of the Rings proper starts taking place. And so that's mm-hmm. a time in the six years between the two. Oops. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So okay. So I kind of wanted to know because I don't really know much about this is like what's happening now in that in that 60 years um and i i was debating on whether like and i'll i'll do it to you do you want to would it be easier to talk maybe geographically by cities or races or would it be talk to talk about characters because some of the characters are easier to talk about like we can talk about the dwarves we could talk about or we could talk about hey what's going on in rivendell at this time or maybe we talk about all of it i don't know it's up to you but yeah, I mean, um, I mean, in that sixty-year span, so it's basically from uh, I, be- I think it's twenty-nine fifty-one of the Third Age is when um, the Hobbit takes place, and then um, and then three thousand one of the Third Age is uh, is that right? Twenty-nine fifty-one. There's a twenty-nine forty-one to three thousand one. Yeah, I think it's three thousand one of the Third Age. That I have to stop birthday. you right there. You're yeah. already an expert. <laughs> <laughs> when you're quoting dates of the third age, that's okay. You see, Ted, well, this it, is perfect, mm-hmm. right? It all, it all comes from, it all comes from, so the secret trick is the appendix is, is appendix B of, right. uh, of, of Lord of the Rings, right. right? So that's the timeline of the second of the third ages. Um, so you can find out like all kinds of interesting stuff. Uh, and it's, and it is the official canon of, of the stories, right? That's right. what happened between the, the end of the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. It'd be great if there was, you know, it, it would be wonderful if there was more stories about Bilbo's adventures in that time. So, so like Bilbo, for example, he's generally like <clears throat> it, Lord of the Rings seems to indicate that he like goes off on adventures from time to time during that period. Maybe not as significant as, uh, you know, his, his, his journey to the lonely mountain with the dwarves and the Hobbit. <clears throat> but, um, but nevertheless, he's still going off on journeys. He's kind of has a reputation as a, as an adventurous, hobbit you know uh, just kind of a kind of a fool in the eyes of the rest of the hobbits for his adventurous nature and uh, but we don't really know too much about any of those adventures um all stated that he's friends with the elves he goes and sees the elves on regular occasions because he mm-hmm. can't go along with them yeah 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 and um uh so um so that you know that's that's kind of what he's up to um uh, Sauron, of course, um, really doesn't figure into the Hobbit very much, but in, in, in Peter Jackson's films, notwithstanding, um, <laughs> but, but he is, when you actually read the timeline, when you read Tolkien's appendices, you realize, um, that was where the whole subplot and the movies came from of the Dolgaldor subplot, um, in the films, uh, because, um, it, Tolkien talks about how, uh, during in the same year that, when when Gandalf goes off in The Hobbit and he kind of disappears for a while, he's actually uh, working with the White Council that consists of Elrond, Saruman, and Galadriel to um, to basically come up with a plan for what to do about Sauron, who's apparently 
come back to Dol Guldur, which is this, um, you know, castle in the south of Mirkwood, uh, kind of fortress in the south of Mirkwood. So, right. so players in the game will know Dol Guldur very nicely because the, the core set, mm-hmm. the very beginning of the game, <laughs> has three different scenarios that you can play. And so in the, the final scenario is really still considered one of the hardest even though the game has been out for 10 years it's still one of the hardest and it's called escape from dol guldur and so it's actually your heroes go into dol guldur and or i'm sorry one of your heroes gets captured and you have to then play the game without one of the heroes and, and not that that means anything mm. to you guys but like like so thematically like you're trying Gold, dol guldur is being settled in this time and the, and and uh-huh. there's other scenarios that go back i don't know how many there are but there's a bunch, right, guys? That like you're going back to Dol Guldur and you you're trying to find things out and do stuff. So, oh yeah. yeah. Print on demand quests, which is a type of on Dol Guldur, which is at the end where um, Galadriel actually takes a host of elves and goes and destroys the remains of Dol Guldur. So that kind of takes mm-hmm. place after the after, after the War of the Ring. Okay. Okay. So yeah, anyway, Dol. Uh... Uh, early game takes place in in Mirkwood, and so there's a lot of okay. things like the evil of Mirkwood, the spiders that live in there, the orcs mm. that come from Dol uh, right. that kind of thing. So the players are very familiar with those threats, we'll say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Well, and and so um, you know, Sauron is eventually uh, within a uh, either that year. I think it's actually the same year that the Hobbit takes place. He's actually. Uh, kind of evicted from Dol Guldur, or at least he's put down somewhat by the White Council, but he decides to go back to the time is ripe to go back to Mordor and, and really uh, Mordor and um, where he once ruled very openly in the Second Age, um, but has not ruled there since then. So it's been, you know, roughly 3000 years since he was in power in Mordor, but he returns to Mordor in that time and begins searching for the ring in earnest and, um, uh, for the one ring of course. And, um, so yeah, there's, there's some really interesting stuff and, and that's what, you know, is, this is what I always want to do is I always want to get people to read, right. I always want to get people to go back right. and, and, and read and read Tolkien and, uh, and read his works because I do actually lo- like the Lord. I, I really love the Lord of the Rings films, but the books, there's so much more in the books. It's, it's incredible. And even just like going through and reading the timeline can be fascinating and it's only a couple of pages, but there's, you realize that there's like Tol- Tolkien had established a lot of a lot of the story that that doesn't even show up in the in the in the story proper, right? He'd established a lot of the background already for these stories, right? It's it's always so interesting because I've been trying to tell um, if you I, you wouldn't know, but my listeners know that I'm a teacher. I'm a high school chemistry teacher, right? So um, cool. and so like I try to talk to my own students about. Lord of the Rings and I'm like so when most people <laughs> write a book they just have a really good story to write and then they mm-hmm. write it yeah. J.R.R. Tolkien developed several languages and he needed to develop a story about how those languages came to be <laughs> mm-hmm. and so that makes Lord of the Rings a whole different <laughs> like a whole different genre of of fantasy you know like that's, yeah there, like, there's, there's just nothing like it I mean it's um yeah, to think like, like you, I mean, you have such a great point there. Like most stories, even like even like um, with Star Wars, right? Uh, George Lucas just, you know, not not to basically George Lucas made this movie and he wrote kind of a he wrote a script for it and was like, let's you know, he's got some cool special effects ideas and then it was like it was really popular and he's like, okay, maybe I'm going to establish some more lore for this, but it was kind of like retroact, you know, it was kind of retroactive. Let's. Let's go back and try to figure out how make this a little more interesting, how some of these things fit together, what the force is exactly, all this kind of stuff. <clears throat> Tolkien, he didn't have it all figured out, but he had he basically created this universe out of he created languages, then he created a universe for those languages to exist in and and stories, kind of myths to go along with those story with that universe. And it right. all and, and eventually it all culminated in Lord of the Rings. Right. So <laughs> After thirty something years of doing that, so I know, like it's, it's incredible. It really, it's totally, mind blowing. It yeah. is mind blowing. Lifetimes work, and it's amazing to see that even today, people are still going back and picking up all of what Tolkien has to offer, and mm-hmm. it's still relevant. The story mm-hmm. means something to 
people just reading. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, before we move on, we're actually going to play a couple of games, but before we get into our first little game here, because, you know, hey, we're a podcast about a game, right? So, um, but, um, before we do, I want, I did want to talk a little bit about like the, probably the, the most, I don't know, the, the thing that people have the most questions about probably is what's going on in Erebor at this time, right? So like, so they just freed Erebor. Um, in the Hobbit, and then the movie did an okay job portraying what happened. You know, Thorin dies. A couple of his, his the, mm -hmm. the line of Thorin is done, um, and I think something happens with dying from the from the Iron Hills comes in. But like so, but what's going on in Erebor now that Smaug is gone? Like what's what's going mm -hmm. on in these sixty years? Well, um, <clears throat> if memory serves, so uh, you're right. Dying, um, <clears throat> who is Thorin's cousin. Uh, and so Thorin dies. He Thorin would have been the king under the mountain, but Thorin dies, and so Dain is kind of the next in succession um, in terms of the dwarves. So he becomes the new, I believe he becomes the new king under the mountain, and um, and they and during that time they also reestablish uh, the city of um, Dale. Yes, thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah, Dale, mm -hmm. um, which is the city that's kind of the the city that sits in the foothills of uh, of Erebor. And it's uh, the city of men. So this is the city where the men of Lake Town fled to when Smaug took over. Uh, I'm sorry, fled away from when Smaug took over. And so they come back and uh, Bard the Bowman is actually their their leader. Uh, he's now like the the leader in, in Dale uh, during that time period. So they those two uh, those two the Dwarven Kingdom under the mountain and then the the city of men and Dale are reestablished during that time period. Um, and then with the dwarves also during that time period, <clears throat> uh, some of them, I believe led by, I believe led by Balin, the dwarf, um, go to try to reestablish the dwarf kingdom of Moria, uh, in the Misty Mountains. I, I believe that happens during that 60 year period as well. Yeah, it is because after, when they go to the council of Elrond had lost contact with, um, the dwarves in the mines. And they wanted to see if Elrond had heard anything, or I'll seek guidance for what to do next. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. So yes, yeah, so it's it's like I always feel like that particular thing. It's like uh, the dwarves kind of fall off the planet. There, like you know, like I get that Gimli, son of Glowin, Glowin was one of the nine, uh, one of the one of the 13, one of the 14, sorry, get my numbers correct. But, you know, and then give like, there's a connection there, but it's like, mm -hmm. there's this huge long story about the dwarves. And this is just on first, <laughs> anybody who knows Tolkien a little more in depth knows that the story is really the story of the elves. But like, you finish the story about the dwarves and then all of a sudden the dwarves are gone. And so it's like, yeah. <laughs> people who don't know are like, what happened to the dwarves? And so it's interesting right. to know that there's like stuff going on. Like, mm -hmm. like it just happens to be, but yeah, the lore, the lore really grew out of the stories of elves, you know, uh, when, when with this, the story of the Silmarillion is the story of the, of the original elves. And, um, and so the Hobbit is, was just kind of this little story that Tolkien's like, I think I'll set this, he was a separate story and he just kind of like, I think I'll have it set in this world that I've created with elves, but none of the main characters are going to be, are going to be elves. <laughs> right. so. In actual fact, I think the first book released was the Hobbit. And yeah. He, Back in retro actively after Lord of the Rings released the Cimmerillion, the Children of Hulu. Mm -hmm. Then later on, after his death, they released the Unfinished Tales. Yeah, uh, right. Letters, and then they've just released um, The Fall of Gondolin, which I'm still yet to read. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the um, yeah, Lord of the Rings. So it was the Hobbit in 1937, I believe, and then Lord of the Rings in 1951 through 52. It was either 51 or 52 and 53. Um, and then, cause they released them in the, you know, it's three separate books. And then, uh, and then the Silmarillion was actually not published until four years after he died, even though he began the Silmarillion when he was in his uh, really, I mean, when he was in his early twenties, I believe, if not, if not younger. <laughs> and he, he tried to get it published previously. Right. But well, nobody make, would do yeah, it. He wanted to make it a package deal with right. the Lord of the Rings. And they were like, yeah. ah, this, this is like yeah. the old Testament. We're not right. We're not. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. There's, yeah. It was a really hard read, but once I got into it, it was dead easy. But those first few chapters of the similar, mm -hmm. 
looks like so dry. And it was yes. Severe just to get through them. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, basically, yes. basically people start the Silmarillion. They're like, they hear like, oh, there's a prequel to Lord of the Rings. It's called Silmarillion. And then you go and you're like, cool. And then you go read it and you're like, three chapters in and you're like, I don't understand any of this. And where are the hobbits? Yeah, right, where, right. where's Aragorn fit in? And there's all no of this, dragons, so. <laughs> right? So no dragons friend. don't come along until much later. Yeah, I right. was very close to quitting the podcast when we started the Silmarillion. I'll just I'll just put that out there. <laughs> right. That was like the first few episodes. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I don't think I can hack this. This is right. this is above my pay grade. That's really funny. But, but I'm glad we persevered. Right. It was, I mean, because it really once you can get through the the Silmarillion, it just enriches your reading of all the other books because you you have the backstory so it just you know it makes it come alive even more um yeah. with the, the lord of the rings and the hobbit books so yeah. yeah so i'm glad we persevered and that, that actually greta that's really awesome because i'm i like that's how i feel about knowing about it for the game you know when mm -hmm. and i'll i'll say this one moment and then we'll talk about this game it's like um there was a point at which you guys were reading um the choices of master samwise so it's the last book mm. of book four but it's the last book of the of the um second two the, the two towers right yep. and so there's a point at which and and ted and grant will will recognize this there's a point at which um the orcs are talking and they're talking about shelob and about how you know the all these things and you talked about how an orc got caught by shelob and was eaten or whatever and for you that was like a throwaway but this is this is how creative the game is or how attention to detail the name of that orcs was oof talk <laughs> and that sounds like a very orc name yeah that's yes that's a good right grishnard right goshnard yes. right <laughs> but <laughs> and so that but that guy that got captured by shelob was oof talk and ted of course oof talk do you know uh, Uftak? Yeah. Oh yeah, Chief Chief Uftak. He's right. from the he's from the first cycle. He's from the core box, actually. Right. Yeah. He's a bad guy in the core box. So it's it's yeah. it's Very just interesting guy. how these these, these connections are being made when yeah. you know I'm listening to you guys and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh my gosh. So anyways, yeah. so this is this is leads right into this game that I wanted to play with you guys. Okay. So you guys, okay, you guys can act as a team. So there's the Tolkien Road podcast as a team, Greta and John. Okay. And then Grant and Ted, you guys are gonna be a team. Okay, we're just gonna alternate back and forth. And so this game is gonna be called Real or Fake. Okay. <laughs> and so this is so I'm gonna give you a character name that is in the game. Okay. So it was printed on a card in the game. And you're gonna tell me whether you think it's a real character from the Lord of the Rings Legendarium, or whether you think it was made up by the game because you need certain things that the game has to do. Like it can't just be straight up. It has to be gamey too, right? So they make up things sure, to, yeah. to, to mm -hmm. make the game a game, right? Got to flesh it out a little bit, yeah. So, right. So the example that I have is um, a hero that was released in the very beginning and it was, um, her name is Eleanor, right? And so Eleanor is a Gondor noble character, right? And so for any of the people out there that know, Eleanor was the name of Samwise's daughter but was not a Gondor nobility, uh, any part of Gondor nobility, right? So they used the name, but didn't use it as the thing. So that would be a fake, that would be fake. Okay, okay. Gotcha. do you get that? Okay, okay. okay. that's our so, example, yeah. Okay, so that's the example. So um, so your job, and we'll start with, uh, can the guests go first, guys? Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So, Thank you. <laughs> so the first the first one I will do is, and I think that this can't, came from the game point of view more than the lore point of view, but I'll still give this one to you. Okay, so real or fake? And you don't have to go into like the story if you don't want to, but okay, so real or fake? Theodrid, he's a noble Rohan warrior. Real or fake? He's real. He's real. He didn't even consult me. I was going to say... <laughs> This is not how this is not how couples February yeah. works here. No, I'm just I, kidding. I'll no. be surprised if I'm wrong. I could have sworn that's a name. No, in Lord I'm. Of the Rings. I'm yeah. You know what? I I trust you. I, I think, think it's like the father. Gonna... I think it's like the father of or grandfather or something like that of uh, of Theoden. Something like that. I'm, I'm not. Say don't real. quote me on that part, but I'm almost certain okay. it's real. Okay. Okay. Would so... you say? Would you have said real too? Well, I was gonna ask. Uh, I was gonna ask David actually to sure. um 
repeat the name. Okay, so the <laughs> so here, okay, so <laughs> it's like the Scripps National Spelling Bee, right? So, <laughs> yes. Can you use his <laughs> name in a sentence? sentence? Yes. Right, yeah. right. So the so the etymology of the name. No, um, so <laughs> so the the name is Theodrid. Theodred. Okay. And so the reason okay. why I'm giving you his traits in the game, we call them traits, is because that can help you determine whether it's real or fake. Right. So, the, right. so he's okay. a he's a noble Rohan warrior. So okay, okay. So Greta, do you agree? Well, with I've your got husband? I've got to say real because would you have said John said real? Well, I was really thinking about it because I was like, I wonder if this is like a thing where they because it sounds like a name I know is mm, real, right, right? And I was just trying to figure out is it is it really that name or did they you know is it is a letter off or a sound off or right. something? But I'll, I'll go with real as well. Right. Uh, so that's true. So it is real. You guys are right. So mm. Theodrid is actually so uh, Grant and I. We actually did an ep we haven't done an episode on Theodrid, but um, I don't think so, no, no. So um, Theodrid is the son of Theoden, who is buried, oh, that's who right. is killed in um, mm -hmm. in one an of the ambush. yeah, in an orc ambush, like when the when the three hunters were going out looking for salmon. Right. right that's right. Yeah. Right. So okay. So at least you get the idea. And I'm tr I'm gonna try not to make like the differences so subtle. You know, like I'm trying to <laughs> give things that are pretty obvious. Okay. So actually, that was Theodred with with an with an e alone, right. and actually this was Theodred <laughs> with a d r e a d. So, <laughs> right, right. 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 Uh, right. Token subtleties. Right. Which, right. Yes. To Tolkien yes. would totally be into that. Okay. So he boys, there's, there's glyph glyph four and. Glyphor Dell and Glyphorenda and 12,000 other elves that all right. have the same name. All the Finns, right? Finarfin, Fingolfin. Yes, fin Finnegan. Fin and, yeah, yeah Finarfin. Right. Fin Finarfin, yes. right? Sounds Fingolfin. like something you do after a party, right? Finarfin. Exactly. <laughs> Finarfin, we had fun right? with Finarfin on the uh, podcast, I remember. Yeah, we did. Okay. So, so um, card talk, you ready? Do me Bring proud here. Okay. Grant, you ready? Just I know along exactly. for the ride. Right. Just along for the ride, mate. Right. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. So, Okay, you guys ready? Uh, Haldan, he is a woodman scout. Uh, hmm, very very familiar with the card. You right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Make sure you're up I, I, to the microphone, Grant, so that yeah. we can hear you. I don't think that he. I, I don't think that he is real. I think. I think he's fictitious, and he was made solely for the for the game storytelling. Because the game makes up its its own, you know, like little stories for the the characters to play in. And sometimes mm -hmm. uh, I think this is one of the one of the made up characters. Well, what does Grant think? No looking up on the internet, okay? Like, you can't look up stuff. Grant, you've been known to do that every once in a while, so. <laughs> no. Yes. <laughs> okay, so now, so do you guys agree? We can't with see what other? Grant's doing. So uh, I, mean, I know, you know right? like, yeah. I know. He, <laughs> right. yeah, we just don't know. He'll be the first to say that he's got a face for podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, mate. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so, do you guys agree with each other? I want to make sure before we do this. I am. I'll defer to Ted's judgment on this because I'm not 100. I can't remember. <laughs> so, Ted, what did you say? All right, we're going with fake. Fake? Okay, so this is interesting. I purposely gave this one to you guys because the name is real, and he's a real character in the in the Legendarium, and he is a woodman, but he's not in the time period of the game. So he's actually a, oh, that was tricky. He's a first age. I he's a first so. age okay. woodman, and so he was like from Haldar, and so um, I wrote down the age. He was from first age three sixty six to uh, four fifty one, um, and so you can see who I want to win this game, don't you? <laughs> There's John and Greta. <laughs> okay, <Kirsten's. laughs> right. the, che the, che the checks in the mail. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. So, so he was real. So he's yeah, a he's a habit, David. Right. So he's a real. He's a he real. Is real he's a real yeah character. okay but even he's not as, and i see what you're saying okay and even thought, as written he's real so he is a woodman and he is a scout got so, it. okay so. i thought when i heard age, the name okay. i was like it sounds that sounds like one of the um one of the men from the first age although i wasn't sure but i was like it sounds like it's one of the um like the, right. the clan of haldor or something like that yeah that's exactly um, where it comes from yep okay and and um and i was like 
And I, but I was trying to think for a second if like he was one of the Rangers or something like that that shows up with Aragorn from like uh, or randomly in a couple of instances in right. Lord of the Rings, but right. uh, but I couldn't remember that. So anyway, right. yeah, my first age law isn't as strong as my third age law. Okay, so, I don't think many people's is. To be right. <laughs> I mean, I don't mind. Not that's what we did the podcast for. We did it. You right. know, that's uh, yeah. we started. We, we we actually started with the Silmarillion because um, we you know because that's where there seemed to be we the did biggest some gap before that though right no we you started did, with you did the waldman letter okay. well, we did the waldman letter because that's at the beginning that's the that's introduction the big, yes. to, right? okay. yeah and you did okay. Mythop- mythopia so uh, yeah not that okay. i know your own library is better than good. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> real or fake the waldman letter no i'm just kidding <laughs> oh i know this one. yeah right so um okay so Okay, so so far it's one nothing, um, one nothing. Tolkien Road. Hey, good job, guys. Woo woo. Uh, okay, we won't play this for too terribly long, but uh, we'll keep going. Okay, so real or fake? Gandalf. No, I'm just kidding. I'm- <laughs> oh <laughs> okay. man, no, you I'm- said low hanging fruit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so that's Gandalf. G A N D O O O F F. Got it. Right, right. <laughs> it actually has like a little rank and bass Gandalf picture on it <laughs> instead of like real artwork. Um, no. Okay, let's get let's get real here. Um, real or fake? Heroin the fair. Can you spell that? Yes. H I R L U I N. The fair, and let me give you his trait. He's got one trait, and it's outlands. This is all you. I have no idea. I I got. It sounds. I gotta go it with sounds fake. fake to me. I gotta go with fake. But uh, yeah, yeah, I can Nothing. Nothing's ringing a bell in the in the okay. story in Lord of the Rings for me. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. So actually, Hero in the Fair is real. Oh, oh man. he is the he is the he's the leader. Uh, so the so Gondor is the big southern empire. You guys know that, but you know, like so, there's the all the lands surrounding it, like Lassenark and all these things. And so, uh, Hero in the Hero think, in the Fair uh, is the leader yeah. of all those guys. So, well, go ahead, Ted. What were you? Yeah, say? I think he's like a captain or something, and yeah, it encompasses all, right, all those okay. little smaller fiefdoms. Uh, yeah. that lie outside of Gondor. Oh, yeah, I remember okay. when we when we read through. Uh, Return of, especially Return of the King for the podcast. Uh, you know, a couple of years ago, I remember when we got to Return of the King, and especially Book Five. I'm just like, wow, there's so many char- like so many minor characters in here that like, like right. I don't even remember because it's been a few years since I've read the book, and you know, so there's almost too many. There's too many to keep track of, but. Anyway, not trying yeah. to be not trying to be like oh, it's trying to justify your wrong answer. <laughs> right, 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 right. See, I, yeah. I like that Greta like distanced herself from you. She was like, I, was, um, yeah. "You went down like a flaming." <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I don't know. I well, that you one. know, that's the perk of just being along for the ride. So. Yeah, yeah. You, you, <laughs> you are barred. I was smog. There you go. Right. There you go. Uh, right. <laughs> okay. But so. I thought it was big too, so. Okay, so we so it's still one nothing. We'll do we'll do three more. Okay, and then uh, so card talk. You ready? Thumbs yep. up. Okay, so card talk. Okay, so Thurindir. He's a Dunedain. <laughs> he's a Dunedain <laughs> ranger. Thurindir. Are you sure? Are you sure he's not an undead <laughs> yeah. sorcerer? We, yeah. So we we just did an episode. So there's a again Tolkien appreciation. So there's a good guy named Thurindir, right? real or fake you guys can figure it out but there's also a bad guy in one of the scenarios called Thoradir right and so like so that's funny how that happens and so, I, I commonly confuse them and they're very distinct I you know well, I can see the why. names are not names but are the, similar. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah yeah oh boy Grant so, what do you think I'm gonna go with fake I, I think he's I think he's fake as well I don't. I know. I know a few of the Dunedain, not not many, but I don't think he's one of the real ones. Okay, so that's correct. Thurindir was made up for the game. Yes. Okay. Good job, guys. Okay, so one one. Okay, so last Uh-oh. round here. Okay, no pressure. All right. No no pressure. Yeah. Carswells. Okay, you ready? Gimli. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Gimli with a Y. <laughs> yeah. yeah right. right. Okay. So. I hope I'm going to I'm going to stick to the Gondor theme at least for the game. Okay? So again, real or fake? Baragond. Gondor warrior. 
That sounds real. He's real. That sounds real. Yeah, Bear God is real. That sounds real, real. Yeah. He's real, real. Yeah, he is real. real. Do you know what? Woo! Do you know where he's from? Um, he had one particular like thing so in the I was, books that I was, was really say, good. And I may be wrong on this, but is is he the is he the um like the captain of the guard in uh, in Minas Tirith? Yes, he's uh, the one that. You get a bonus point. <laughs> bonus point. Yes, bonus. you get a bonus point, and now card talk can't win. We might as well not play. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah, so he's the guy that actually went against orders, but saved Faramir. Right? He couldn't. Nobody could save. Yeah, Faramir. like he, so. He, he has yeah. like a he has like a man crush on Faramir. It's the only thing I know I about totally him. Totally see why. Right, and then yeah. I think I think at the very end, Aragorn pardons him from his duty because Baragon was so right. distraught about like he, he gave, like he was a captain, but he's like, they, he stripped him of his title, but then became the personal guard to Faramir, you know, like, so I don't right. know. There was like some sort of bad, but good that came out of it. But yeah. okay, yeah. no, yeah. right. I remember talking about right. that at length on the podcast. because Yeah. yeah that right. Was and, exactly. and that's what I was going to say. Another plug for your podcast, but I mean, this is really like, this is what you learn by combining both what you do mm -hmm. and what we do. Like, this is mm -hmm. where, like, if you don't, Aren't play it doesn't have the meaning that it does. You know, like you're playing mm -hmm. Baragond and Baragond has a whole bunch of defense and doesn't do much else. And guess what he does in the book? Like he's just defending people. You know, like that's what he does, you know? So mm -hmm. it gives you that sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. So last one for the boys. I actually had a list of a billion of these, um, but I only did this for anyways. Okay. So Better rip. Okay. You ready? Rossiel. Her her one trait is Sylvan. Rossiel. Rossiel. Mm. You guys can think about it too while we're going uh, here. Rossiel. Real mm. or fake? I know the card all too well. <laughs> uh she's a she's an elf. How could how could she possibly be, be fake? She must be real. <laughs> I like that. That's good. Yeah. Grant? That's my guess. Grant can agree or disagree. Uh, I'm going to go for fake. Oh, now you guys have to oh. fight it out. Rock, oh. paper, scissors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is another okay. thing from the Tolkien Rock, Road paper, podcast. scissors, Grant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, assuming wait, 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 through, wait. I'm assuming you threw paper because I can't see, so I win. <laughs> so you have you actually have to whisper, rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, right. paper, scissors, shoot. You don't pull out the mic. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yes, quiet walk, rock, right. rock, paper, scissors. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, well, if Grant thinks that she's fake, that she's probably fake, so I'll agree with Grant. Rossiel is fake. Wow! Wow! Saved. Uh, saved. So that was close. How do you how do you spell that? R O S S I E L, Rossiel, and it may be Rossiel. Like the, the, yeah. the emphasis may be on different syllables there, but right. you know, like, <laughs> um, but that's it. Okay, so here's the thing: it's two two. Uh, all the tiebreaker side we'll, we'll give you the last the last say if you get it right you win if you get it wrong we win and then we'll move on okay so right on okay, okay. let's do so, it okay no pressure so no, no. again thinking on you All thinking you. back to gondor right okay i have a definite theme for you guys mablong or moblong gondor ranger well I know Moblong, I feel like he exists in the first age. So I'm inclined to say he's like the other one because I don't remember him from the story uh, from Lord of the Rings. Um, the name is familiar. But I believe to he's me. one of, uh, I believe this name of one of Feanor's uh, sons in the first age, if memory serves, or I'm, I'm just like a letter off or something like that. Um, so I'm going to have to go with uh, fake. What do you think? Oh wait, fake? I thought you said real. <laughs> well, uh, real, but but the the question is whether he's a real third age character, right? No, I think it's just whether he's real in general, right? Sure. Well, no, real I in was... general. <laughs> <laughs> if that's the case, then he's real. Yeah, yeah, then he's real. So, yep. Okay, I get. I'm confused. Okay, so real in the the, the not rules of real. this game are very fluid, Greta. You just gotta go with it. Bas basically, basically, if we're right, we win. If we're wrong, 
they lose. Okay, so, so you're saying he's <laughs> fake because he's not in the third age, but he's real in the first. I just age. thought the rules were was he was he real in the uh, in the in the. Third I actually age was very not. not clear about that because of Haldan. I didn't give my That's podcast credit for yes. Haldan, but they said they said fake. But I said it was wrong because it was real, and it was real mm-hmm. because it was a first age character. Oh well, if he's See? yeah, he is a first. Mablong is a first age character. I'm almost certain. Yeah. So. So okay. what are so we real. doing? Real. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah. So Mablong is real. You're right. Yes. But he was actually one of the two um, guards of Far- Faramir. There was um, Damrod and Mablong that were sh- going to oh. shoot Smeagol when they were okay. at the when they were at the pool oh, of Hanath the yeah. Noon. Okay. That's right. right. So Greta, okay. stick to your guns. You knew that it sounded familiar. You were right. Uh huh. Yeah, I was right. Who was I thinking of? No, nice. like, I think I um, think that you I think that you sound pretty convincing that it was like <laughs> related back to the first age. And I well, so while you're looking it up, I will say to to my listeners that John, you you love the Cimmerillion, the similar similar the, the the first book that or the <laughs> the Cimmerillion so much that you've you've actually published a couple of books on the Cimmerillion, right? Tolkien's o- Tolkien's yeah. Overture and Tolkien's um, Requiem, which both relate to music, which is huge in the Tolkien universe. So yeah. Yeah, so um, so the first one that I wrote was Tolkien's Requiem, and it's it's really an ex- an exploration of the story of Baron and Luthien, uh, which is a great Tolkien couple. By yeah, the way. yeah, by the, yeah, mm-hmm. really, it's like arguably the greatest. You know, people think Aragorn and Arwen, you know, are a great Tolkien couple, but it's like not like Baron and Luthien are the are where it's at, right? Mm-hmm. They're the poster um, couple. They oh, are. Yeah. They <laughs> are. Uh, incredible story. In fact. I wrote the book because I had had so much difficulty getting through Silmar- the Silmarillion the first time. And then I got, I finally got to Baron and Luthien and I was like, well, if you just put Baron and Luthien at the front of this, at the front of this book, then you could read the whole thing because it's such a compelling story. <laughs> so and, and actually Sauron is, is a, a prominent character in the story as well. So it's, it's actually much more relatable for somebody coming from a Lord of the Rings background. Uh, so, um, so, there's a lot of interesting overlaps too, like um, Baron and Luthien. The name Baron uh, and is on the names Baron and Luthien are on the gravestone of Tolkien and his wife Edith. So they were uh, essentially like it's like it's basically like their epitaph, right? So it's really cool for those who love Tolkien and want to know more about him just to read this story and understand like mm-hmm. the significance of it. So that book, Tolkien's Requiem, is about is about that story and tries to kind of draw talk about how it draws a lot of the different strands and themes of the Silmarillion together Mm -hmm. um, and maybe serve as a starting point for people who have trouble getting starting on the Silmarillion from the very beginning. Right. And then as an FYI, Mablung is in the first age. He's chief captain of Thingol and the masters of his hunters. That's right. Okay. So he is in the first age as well. So you were right. So, so you're right on all the courts, John. (laughs) I wasn't I wasn't right that he's the son of Fanor though, so I was, I well, was incorrect okay. about that. But. I mean, so it can't be the same one that's in the first and the well, third. Maybe well, they were named after each other or something. Like, yeah, or something. Uh, the, the names, know. characters in the third age not elves, are definitely wouldn't... like second age and third age characters are definitely like named for At, for first ancient, age because all this yes. lore was okay. in their background, right? Like, that makes sense. It's like Denethor is in the movies is Denethor the third, I believe it mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. It's uh. Yeah. You're. You're right. I think it's actually Denethor the second. But he. Yeah. They're. They're. Um. The dwarves, men, elves. They all will repeat names. Right. And right. it's tribute to people who came. Great people who came before. Right. It's a good thing we Very don't good. do that in real life. Right. <laughs> <laughs> George <laughs> <That is> Foreman. <laughs> so, yes. Right. right. Lord of the Rings is like the Pope. Yeah. Is that, right. yeah is that right well, they act- actually that's one of the things that, that names that's actually mm-hmm. one of the things that john and greta say all the time on their po- podcast is that lord of the rings was um accidentally re- catholic and then uh, purposely catholic in its revision right like it was purposely that's what tolkien like, said yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So. The, the, the tolkien quote on that it, of course he was a very he was a very devout uh, and lifelong Catholic, and he, he, but he did not write it as like an allegory. He was very vehement to like be like, I'm not yeah. writing some kind of religious allegory here. But, but he also said, um, it's a thir- He said it's a Lord of the Rings is a thoroughly religious and Catholic work, unconsciously so in the writing, but consciously so in the revision. So, you know, what I take that to mean is he like, as he went back and he read what he wrote, he's like, wow, there's a lot 
going on here that I didn't even realize when I was writing it. Um, so, and, and maybe even edited it somewhat to reflect some of that. So a lot you, about that on our podcast. I was so, going to say, yeah. and you point out a lot of those things um, in, in your podcast. Um, let's move in. Let me, let me just really um, quick. We'll talk a little bit about more about the lore. Okay. Like of, of the, of this time period and then and, and even older i want to get into a little bit of the elves um for anybody who knows me and what i like to do i have i love playing elves um they have unique characteristics in the um in the game that make them really fun to play um but um in the game there's two races of elves sylvan and noldor okay and now you get the sense that noldor are the older elves because there's a lot of elves in the game that people recognize um like elrond is considered a noldor um is kirdan the shipwright considered a noldor yeah, in the game he guys is. yeah he is. yeah so i mean so there's all these noldor and then like the people and then galadriel is a noldor and then there's all the elves you've never heard of who are sylvans <laughs> you know like mm -hmm. you're thinking of like um like if you're really name uh dropping you know like Orifin and Rumil and Haldir are all like all the people who show up at Helm's Deep. You know, like those are all the Sylvan uh, elves and things like that. Thranduil and Legolas. You know, those are those mm -hmm. are considered Sylvans. Um, but could you talk a little bit about elves and kind of you know because the game, the not the game, the, sure. the lore is all about elves. So I think bringing any of that history to the people who play the game would be great, especially about Noldor and Sylvan. But you know anything? Yeah. Well, absolutely. Um, and if uh, for those who own a copy of the Silmarillion, there are a couple of tables in the back of uh in the book that were included by Tol by well, I guess by Christopher Tolkien. Uh, I assume they were either created by him or or by by J.R.R. Tolkien. Um, but one of those tables talks about the different group like where all the different groups of elves come from and it's not doesn't doesn't spell it out real well so you kind of have to have somebody translate it for you but basically the elves in general as a as a species or whatever you want to call it of people as, as opposed to dwarves or men or anything else um, are the first born children of Iluvatar so they are the uh, they 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 are the uh, these people who are put into the world and sort of wake up uh, before there's a sun in the moon, a sun and a moon, and they wake up in the on the oh gosh the shores of uh, Quivian uh, and uh, way in the east. This sounds strangely uh, angelic. Sorry to interrupt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, We're just it, talking about the themes, you know. The totally. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and 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 so um, the world has been kind of. It being formed by this group of uh, like great, like basically angelic beings called the Valar, right? And um, but th and they've been sort of they know that the first that these elves are going to come, but they've been preparing this world for them. Um, it's kind of sweet, like when you think about it. They're like they're like working hard to like make this world wonderful for these young young uh, children, right? And um, and so they wake uh, the, these elves wake up um, and then they get drawn over to this the what's called the blessed realm valinor and valinor is at the end of lord of the rings that's where uh to the well to, at least the blessed realm is where gandalf and when they all get on the ships at the end right mm -hmm. and they and they journey away right into the unknown right mm -hmm. they're actually heading to this place the blessed realm in the west and so going back way to even before the first age the the elves are kind of drawn to the blessed realm by uh, the Valar by these angelic beings, the Valar, but along the way, different groups of elves start to start to kind of fall off from this journey for various reasons. And so they break up into these different groups. There's three groups that ultimately complete the journey to, um, to the blessed realm. And those are the Vanyar, uh, the Teleri and the Noldor. And so the Noldor are like you were saying, they're one, they're basically make a long story short they they're in the blessed realm for a long time one of them creates the silmarils these holy jewels they get stolen by melkor aka morgoth who's the original bad guy he was he was sauron's boss right he's the, he's the og right yes, <laughs> it, yes. It, 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 in, in every sense 
every sense of the word. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, but he, um, he kind of, he steals these whole, these holy jewels and takes them back to, uh, Balerion, which is the original kind of middle earth, um, before it gets sunk beneath the, the ocean, uh, at the end of the first age. And the Noldor basically follow him back against the will of the Valar. And that's how they wind up back in middle earth. And because they're trying to get the holy jewels back from, from, uh, Melkor. So the Vanyar remain the Teleri. Um, there's a lot of sad stuff that happens with them. The Teleri <laughs> are, are actually kind of related to the, who are called the Sendar, who are the elves that they live in Beleriand, but they never complete the journey over to the blessed realm. Um, and, and, and the Sendar at some points begin to enter. Then there's other groups, um, that the names escape me right now, but basically the Sendar are, are kind of like, um, a, a group of Sylvan elves. This, the term Sylvan elf is, is, is like a general term to refer to, um, these elves that never made the journey. They, they never completed the journey to the blessed realm. Um, and, and typically like to like dwell in the forest and that kind of thing. Um, and by the third age, they're all somewhat mixed together. Right. Um, although the Noldor always have kind of a haughtiness about them where they're like, well, we're the Noldor. So we're a little more special than you guys. Cause we actually went to the blessed realm and all that kind of stuff. They're a little bit more refined and, um, knowledgeable about seafaring and Mm -hmm. they're more, um, welcoming to people of, other races, whereas the Sylvans are more generally distrustful. Right. With when they take in the Fellowship of the Ring, where Haldia takes the group of them in, in Lothlorien, the blindfolded, and um, Gimli has a bag over his head. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. What they wanted to do. Um, so they're more distrustful than that of their Noldor counterparts. Right. Right. Yeah. So and so, uh, like you said, Galadriel is an old um, and, you know, and and she's actually there in the first age. Um, uh, Elrond is actually an interesting fellow because he's a half elven. He's not. Um, he's he's actually um, part man and part elf. Um, but he he chooses. Which, he which has, part is elf? <laughs> it's, uh, it's a good question, actually. But, uh, <laughs> the part that lives forever, right? That's right. Actually, well, yeah. so he actually he has a brother. Um, so he he and his he and his brother Elros are descendant are the sons of uh, Yarendil, who um, is the one. There's a whole lore associated with him as well. But um, they have to make a choice whether they want to live as elves or as men. Basically, do they want to be immortal or not? And uh, Elrond chooses to be immortal. Um, Elros chooses to be, uh, to be a man, but he actually receives three times the lifespan of a normal man. And, um, is he's, he's basically the founder of Numenor, right? Which is the whole second age story. Right. Which is what we're hoping to get on the prime, Um, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Uh, 2021, I believe that's due to be released. That's that's what they're shooting for. (laughs) We'll see it. We'll believe it when we see it, of course. Yeah. Well, that's it because there's, not been much detail being released on that. I've been trying to keep up with when that's coming and the information that we're getting out of Amazon and what I is very slim. We're getting the map and that's about it. That's right. mm-hmm. Like guys, we have a map, so at least we have at least we have that. You can see that we're doing trying to do it. I mean I'm a, I'm kind of encouraged that they're not trying to rush it out. Um because it, it would be a little discouraging if they were like, well we gotta have this out by like beginning of 2020 so we're just going to throw whatever story together and it's like no like take your time and do it right you know well, do it right when yeah. they announced it i wasn't sure which way they were going to do it whether they were going to put it in the gap between lord of the rings and the hobbit in that six year gap because there's a lot they could do in that period mm-hmm. or they we're going to go further ahead like setting afterwards aragorn wiping up clearing up the rest of Orodruin and the things he does with Iama. Or even going mm. just the events of the Hobbit. I didn't expect them to go a couple of thousand years before. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that was what they expected to do in the first place. But um, you know, I think uh, somebody made a convincing. I think I think one of the people who was involved in Game of Thrones came along and made a convincing pitch to them that they could do this. And um, and here we are. We'll see if we'll see if right. they pull it off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is great. 
Um, can we, can, do you have time to play one more game? Because I, I sure. love the whole game thing. Um, yeah. And the reason why I wanted to play this game, um, actually, this game was the one that I was looking forward to more than the first one, um, because I think it's... I, I I spoke to you about how much I think that the game designers really care for the intellectual property of Tolkien, right? Mm -hmm. They're not just trying to put something on the table that makes money that's, you know, just gamey, right? So, so there are cards that are in the game that I believe, and maybe Ted and maybe Grant believe, that are also, like, super thematic. You know, like, if I could give you the name of the card... I would guess that you could maybe guess what the card does in the game based on mm -hmm. just the name of it. Okay. So okay. that's, so I want to, I want to put the kind of the designers to the test a little bit to see if again, our, our lore, our lore experts can do this um, in order to explain this and Ted and Grant, feel free to jump in a little bit, but I'm going to explain the game just a little bit, just on the surface, just so you have some idea of what goes on. Okay. So it is a card game and in the card game, you have this threat, okay? So threat is represented, is is a thing that represents kind of um, um, how much attention you are drawing to yourself, to the forces of Mordor. The higher your threat, mm -hmm. the more Mordor and Sauron understand, like see you and are, want to do stuff to you, okay? Yeah. So if you get up to 50 threat, you lose the game. Okay. Okay. So that's fine. Okay. And then there's three major things you get to do in the game. So your characters get to do three things. Okay. So they can, they can do something called questing, which is like they explore locations or, you know, like do things that are like exploring. And then the things that you would expect things to do in a game, which is attack and defend. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so like, and it's much more complex than that, but for what we're trying to do, like, that's what it is. Okay. So that's, okay. you know, so there's this threat tracker that goes up to 50, you get to 50, you lose the game. Okay. And, and, and the game can trigger off of like the higher the threat, the more the game tries to kill you because you're doing all these crazy things to try to, you know, like here I am, here I am. Right. And then, so again, so then there's this questing attack and defense. Okay. So, um, does that seem reasonable guys? Is that, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm following you. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, okay. that's uh, a great recap. You know, your okay. characters are always trying to accomplish uh, an objective in the game, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So yeah. those are the three three ways to to do the objectives. Got it. Right. Okay. okay so, so I'm going to just give you um, some things here. So, um, if you had to guess, if there was one character that has the highest threat to begin with. Okay, so characters have threat. Okay, the higher your threat, the closer you are to Sauron noticing you. So there's one character that has higher threat than any other character. What character do you think that would be? Okay, let me ask a clarifying question sure, for sure. my sake. So I would have I would have initially understood that and, and just thrown out there Sauron. Yeah, um, right. Good guys. So, so oh, good threat guys. in terms of good guys, right? So, so if you what? have if you have mm. the higher th the threat that you get, the more likely Sauron is to do stuff to you. You're becoming right, a greater come and kill you. <laughs> yeah, he, he's you're becoming a greater and greater threat to what he is doing. Yeah, the higher mm. your the higher the the uh... the character's threat value, the bigger a threat they are to Sauron himself. God, the question okay. the question basically becomes like which of all the characters. Uh, in the game, which are going to be all third age characters, like which one poses singly the greatest threat to him? Threat to Sauron. Okay. Now, do they right. have to be like good guys, or could they be kind of like bad guys that aren't Sauron? Um, I would say that for the game purposes, yeah, it could be like. So to give you an idea, um, Smeagol, even though he's like kind of a neutral bad kind of guy, is also a good character, and you can play him as a good character in the game. Okay. 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 So it. like. <laughs> But, you know, we're, we're talking, you know, mainly good guys. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. Okay. so who has the highest, who provide, who is the highest threat to Sauron from the, from the get go? This is, I could go a couple different ways here. I don't know. Yeah, about I you. know. Same. And you're I probably think, well, right in a lot of ways. And so, yeah. <laughs> If they don't get it right, I bet they're going to get it very close. Yep. Like, well, they'll be within like, an inch. Yep. Of her, 
anybody on the White Council, like I was gonna say, yeah, Gandalf or Galadriel, yeah, Elrond. Elrond. Um, I mean, I'd probably go with like Galadriel or Gandalf, um, even above Elrond because they've Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gandalf is Gandalf. He's he's actually a he's a Maiar, so he's not actually he's not even just an elf. He's even Galadriel is not a Maiar. he's He's an angelic being himself. Right. Um, but then there's also Saruman, who's not exactly a good guy, but he was on the White Council, and he's also he's like he's more powerful, at least in that time period, than even Gandalf is. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But then there's Aragorn as well. I know. I was thinking of Aragorn too. <laughs> yeah. I I would probably an answer that you think's more indicative, rather than trying to discuss it between yourself, because you're just going to throw out like ten thousand answers. <laughs> <laughs> be, be succinct, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let's see. Who's, who's our guest? Who are we going to put our money on? You know, I've got. I've just got to go with Gandalf. Got to go Gandalf. Yeah, but I mean, I like. I like your case for Saruman too. So I don't know. I'll well, let you pick. I, I I'm going to say Gandalf just because I don't think Saruman falls into the category that we're guy. talking talking You're about. Possibly right? good guy. Yeah. So I'm going to say Gandalf. We're going to say Gandalf. We're going to say Gandalf. Ted, do you want to give him the answer? You're 100 percent correct. All right. <laughs> See this? Right. Uh, Go ahead, Ted. The, the characters have a threat value of so the lowest printed threat value now is is three, and the highest of a hero is fourteen. And okay. Gandalf is the only single character to have a fourteen value. Uh, okay. Many characters fall under him, like twelve, thirteen. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of the characters you named are are in that category, oh, right up there. Uh, but but no one like Gandalf's only on that single highest tier. Mm-hmm. Uh, and exactly, you know, the developers, I think nailed it for exactly the reasons you said like who's the biggest threat yeah mm-hmm. it's Gandalf. Yeah. who's can one of my play saruman uh, yes, you can fact, play yeah, yeah uh he's a card that's not yet released but he's been spoiled so he'll, he's coming out all right um, oh. so and he's he got a threat me. of 13 okay. just so below he, that of gandalf yeah but okay. well, he's on par with elrond right elrond okay. who's okay. 13 oh, like so okay. so you were right there right with all of them but exactly yeah. your logic and this is this is what i'm trying to say about the game forever you know like it uh, follows along so another yeah. another gandalf question i'll give you the so there's a card in the game called favor of the valar hmm. okay so and so just mm-hmm. to so i i i assumed you may know what scene that refers to or what part of the of that of the legendarium that refers to but yeah you know, i think so, i do. So what? So that refers to what? Well, I, I would I would guess that it refers to the um, uh, to the the unfinished tales and the uh, of the Astari, um, where it, it speaks about um, uh, that when the wizards are sent over, there's five wizards sent over from the blessed realm to essentially do battle with um, with Sauron, and Sauron is the one who's kind of like the de facto in charge guy, mm-hmm. but but Gandalf actually is sent along and he's, he's actually like favored. I forget which, uh, which of the Val, which of the Valar it is. He's favored by, it's one of the, I think it's one of the, is it, I think it, it may be, um, Yavanna. Maybe Yavanna. Yeah. Yeah. So is that, is that what, is that yeah. What so, so that okay. I think, I think it's even more specific cause this is an event card in the game. Okay. That mm-hmm. does something, and I think it's specifically referring to the favor that Gandalf gets when he fights the Balrog. Ah, uh, mm-hmm. okay. And so, and so, you know, like he fights the Balrog, and he gets favor, and there's an epic battle, and then something happens, right? So, if you had to guess what the favor of the Valar does on a general sort of level, what would you guess that it does? <laughs> Just destroy, like destroys whatever bad guy you needed to. <laughs> I, Almost, it's like, <laughs> Almost. Yeah, flip it and reverse it because the Val- the Valar probably don't want to do much to the bad guys, but they probably want to help the good guys. Help yeah. the good guys, yeah, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it actually it actually brings your brings the the easy thing to say is it kind of brings somebody back to life. If you die, oh, okay. it brings you okay. back to okay. life okay. because he comes back. Okay, got right. it. I'm I'm following it now. See? Yeah. So so that it's like sense. that favor of the valor. When he comes oh, yeah. back, is hand off the white, right? Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good. Okay. So okay, a right. couple more of these, and then we'll we'll move along. So there's so this is for you, Greta, because I know you love Bomber. I do love Bomber. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And why do you why do you love Bomber? Because Bomber, he's jolly and fat and funny. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> so. So Bomber is a hero in the game. He's a character in the game. Awesome. And he's got 
an ability. Okay. okay. And so if you had to guess what his ability is, what is it? <laughs> and so here's the thing. I'll tell you this. And this is super thematic is that there's a lot of dwarves like Thorin. Like if you get five dwarves in play in the game, like it triggers a whole bunch of other things that happen. Okay. okay. So, so there's a thing that you get five dwarves in the game, you get bonuses, right? So what's okay, Bomber's ability? Five, five bonuses. Okay. What's what's what, Bomber's ability? Yeah. What do you think his special ability is? Well, gosh, I mean, he's clearly he's um, comedic relief, but like, that's <laughs> probably not what you're going for. No, that's. I mean, um, he is kind of, but that's what Ted is on our podcast. So that's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you need you always need one of those. You need at least one of those. Right. Um, you know the answer. Okay, no. I'm just like I'm just trying to think of all the things. I'm like, well, I definitely want him on my team in a drinking or eating competition, yeah. <laughs> right? For sure. Right. You know, but you're 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 on the right path. Am I, I know. on the right path? <laughs> right. Okay. So the the big hint is that you need it, you, that f there's five or more. So you know, like Bomber, like so. What what does Bomber do? Oh, does he count for more than one? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. He awesome. Count, and, and it's funny because that theme is over and over again in the books. And then we can play Bomber and he counts for two. Bomber counts for two. You know, like he That's counts for two fantastic. dwarves. That's great. Oh, I love awesome. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. And so, yeah. so this is really interesting. So there's also a card in the game called A Very Good Tale. Okay. And this I picked up only because of your podcast. So this is why I've included it in the show. So A Very Good Tale refers to when Gandalf meets Beorn. And mm -hmm. all of that craziness mm -hmm. ensues. Okay, mm -hmm. and so, mm -hmm. and so it comes from that book. So, um, what it does is it allows you, as a player, if you use a very good tale, to pull cards from your deck, and you get to put in play a certain number of cards. If you had okay. to guess how many cards you get to put in play, based on that, how many cards do you get to put in play? Hmm. So this relates to the uh, to the. Meet Gandalf and Bayorn meeting. Right. How many cards? Oh goodness. How many? How many? How many characters? How many? You know? Could you put? Oh. I. Um. And I this is another one that. I bit of a brainstorm. I'm trying to think about. Remember how they keep coming? They keep oh, coming. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I'm trying to remember it's how two. many there. It's two by two. It's two by. That's it. Yeah. They get two by two. Yeah. That's right. right. They came in. Yes. So it's, it's in. two, okay. right? And then someone That's... comes in. Bomber comes in all by himself. <laughs> <There we laughs> because Bomber, guess what Bomber does? He counts for two. Counts <laughs> so, for two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. So actually, so if you nice. play a very good tale, you're allowed to look through your deck and find two. It doesn't have to be dwarves, but you get to find two characters and put them into play. And so it God, simulates that whole thing. Bummer. I love yeah, this. That's yeah. really fun. And this is, this is what I'm saying about how attention to detail these guys do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's very cool. That's, awesome. That's very, very cool. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, do you have time for one more, John? Yeah. This is sure, this yeah. one's specifically for John. Uh, okay. Not Go because not not because Greta, you don't know, but just because I feel mm -hmm. like this is right in John's wheel out. Yeah. Real no, hustle. it's fine. You already gave okay. me one just for me anyway, so right. this is only fair. I know. Sorry, sorry, Ted and Grant, that I'm kind of. Uh, <laughs> forcing you out but this is my geek moment no with please the Carswells. please uh don't upon our guests no. <laughs> don't upon our guests okay so John... Can i just ask real quick is grant still awake grant yeah. are you awake okay that's, yeah. that's a, this is amazing to me i just please. as an inside you know because we can't see you i keep thinking that maybe we're just going to start hearing snoring at some point oh so. we are hearing Drop. snoring so Drop. so Grant's Grant's uh, fiance is snoring in the background, and so this this episode of the Carswells is uh, of the Carswells. This episode of Card Talk is brought to you by Katie's snoring. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm just impressed that you're still awake, Grant. Props, yeah. seriously. Okay. Like I guess I'm used to it being up with these guys. Yeah. Nice, mm -hmm. nice. What time is it there? Just I can't. I'm not good at time differences. What time is it there? Twenty to three. It's twenty to three. Yeah, so, so it's, it's almost three a.m. Yeah, huh? Three forty-two. No, two forty-two. Twenty. That... Uh, two forty-two. You're right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm yeah. even more impressed now. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hide. No, that's David. fine. That's great. 
and don't ask him how many kids he has because he still doesn't hasn't kept track of the count. Yet. It's like, <laughs> oh, no, I'm curious. There, well, there's five. He's got five, right? So awesome. none of them count for two. It's it's <laughs> wild how that happens. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so so John again, Greta, you can you can chime in on this, but this, this one I had in me. in for John specifically, but got it. Okay, okay. so sure. You guys are three for three, okay? Right. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they've gotten all don't, of them don't right. Spoil so. my record here, okay. dude. Yeah, right. Don't bring her down, John. No. Mm -mm. That Villanova mm -mm. grad, she's got a. That's right. Yeah, she's right. okay. So there's there's a card in the game that attaches to other cards, like so, like in the game, you can obviously. And I'm avoiding things like weapons and armor. Those are considered mm -hmm. attachments, so you can put them on and they attach to characters. Right? Does that make sense? Like equi okay. equi yeah. equipment, okay? Sure, okay, got it. So there is a card in the game called the Light of Valinor, mm. okay, that can only be attached to a certain race of characters. Which race of characters can it be attached to? It seems logical that it would be elves, but I'm like... I know that seems almost too obvious. Yeah. Yeah, but it's the uh, it's the extra credit that I want to get to. <laughs> so, so you're so you're right that it, it yeah right it's, it's elves right so the so but in the game there's only Noldor and Sylvan elves so it can be attached to any one of those right so the okay. so, so but the game is again in my opinion so well designed that there are actually there's actually one target that's super awesome for the light of Valinor to come on. Okay, like you put it on this oh. character. They were released together, and I think that it makes awesome thematic sense. Although if you've watched the movies, you would never know. That gives you another hint. Okay, so um, but so that's one character that you put this on. And then there's a secondary character that you could put the Light of Valinor on that's that's slightly less awesome, but still okay. So, but do you yeah. know who you put? So you're saying that you can put it on any elf. You can put it on any elf, right? There's one particular character that it. You can put it on Legolas. He's a Sylvan elf. He's you know he meets the the prerequisite. But there's sort of an ideal target that is both good mechanically in the game and also very very thematic. I think I know. Wait, so I think I know. I think you can use it against or that that like he he helps you do stuff. Yeah. Okay. Especially for a particular elf. Um. Right. And the Ooh. other hint is, if you watched only the movies, you would never, you would never know. Oh, oh well, now I'm not sure. I know. I'm kind of drawing a blank now. Um, uh, <laughs> I was going to say he's a first age elf, but that's 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 all of them. <laughs> hmm. But, um, hmm. Well, I was, yeah, I'm, I'm well, clearly off base. With my thoughts. Let me, so. Oh man, I feel like uh, I, f I feel like it's gonna come to me, and then I'll be like, "Duh." Um, it's not the sh no. Would it be the shipwright guy? You're saying Kiridon? Kiridon. I will give you credit for that. He is the second most awesome target for okay. for well, the I light would, of Alamor. I, I would just I would just off the bat. I mean, I would guess that it's um that it's Galadriel. That was my but, thought too, but then you said he. I know. Yeah, so I'm like, Oh, I did say, say I didn't mean to say he, but it is a he. I did not I mean to say he. I was, was thinking Galadriel uh, as well. But so then the movie would have given that away. So it's not right. Galadriel. So it's, it's not Galadriel. Yeah. Uh, hey hey Ted. Him. Yes. Hey hey Grant. It's yep. not it's not Arwen either, right? No. No, no, it can't be Arwen. <laughs> Are we talking that's, about Elrond? No, no, no. But if I said it's not in the movie and it can't be Arwen. Oh, I see. I, 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 I don't know. But I <laughs> got like, I vote, see. So I'm I good. See. I'm good. He's, like, it's, he's from the house of Elrond. Right. He's classified as okay. being from the house of Elrond. Oh, Is man. it... Uh, uh, but this is a third. This is a third age character, right? Well, they, he was he was around in the first age. He was like, around, in the yeah. First age. And obviously, he saw he like he needs the light of Valinor for a lot of reasons in the first age. But he's around in the third age. He doesn't play much of a role in the War of the Ring, like um, in the literature. I don't know. Yeah. Mm. Um, 
I can't. I'm gonna kick myself. I don't like. I, I will. Part, okay. Pardon my French, but maybe. who's the most badass dwarf that or ba- badass elf that exists in the Legendarium? That exists in the in the first age. Does a whole bunch of crazy stuff, and then also plays is in the in the in the books. Uh, namely the uh, namely the Fellowship of the Ring. Oh uh, wait, wait. Um, um, what's the uh, G? Um, yep. What can I think of? Uh, yeah. I, I'm getting mixed up. It's not Glorfindel. I get it, I'm getting mixed up with it. It's um, uh, Gilgalad. <laughs> He's not in the. Nope. You were right the first time. What Glorfindel? Yeah, Glorfindel. Yeah. Right. So, okay. so to the movie thing is they replace Glorfindel with Arwen. Like all the things that Arwen. Right. does okay. in the movie Glorfindel does in the book like save like comes out with Asphaloth and t- oh. rescues Frodo and does all that stuff but in the first age which I have found out through your podcast like he battles like every Balrog in the face of the earth like <laughs> hundreds it seems like hundreds of Balrog like he just keeps killing him and killing him and killing him and killing him like and then he dies and then they give him back like the light of the Valinor like he's back and then he's good and then they don't even put him in the movie yeah and then they don't put it like yeah. I thought that was a big disgrace to um, his character. But... Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of that in the movies, unfortunately. unfortunately. So, yeah. Yes. Yes. True. Well, <laughs> you give him the light of Valinor, and he's particularly powerful in his hands. Then, yeah. Like, so what you can do with him with the light of Valinor is a lot. So, what it does is it allows you to. So, you can use a character to que- to to quest or to attack or defend. Like, uh-huh. you can mm-hmm. usually use them to do one of those. And so by using the light of Valinor, you can use him to quest and then also attack or defend. But attack is really he's he his attack power is is good. Is good. You'd always want to use him to attack. So he can do two things in a turn as opposed to just uh, one when he has the light of Valinor. And so that's okay. why Kier, Kierdan can also do those things too. So it's it works itself. Very out. cool. Can I ask gotcha. real quick? So this the card game, is it like um is it a standalone? Like you could just play around like like at a like at a dinner party or something, and then it oh. ends, or is it like more like a D and D thing where it kind of keeps like goes over weeks and days. And well, it depends on how you want to play it. I mean, <laughs> you've got this standalone card game itself where you can do a quest in a co- in about an hour. Or okay. You've got the campaign mode, which is taken from either the Hobbit book or the over the fellowship over the entire Lord of the Rings, there's several different quests. I um, see. It, yeah. And if you do that, you can make a little campaign pool, and there's okay. a set of rules for that, and that can last a couple of weeks. Yeah. Each couple of weeks. Okay. I'm two years into mine, because I'm playing with somebody. <laughs> the, the beauty of the game, and then I'll give it to Ted just real quick, but the beauty of the game for me is that I can play the game alone. You can play it one player, and it's just as fun to play it with one player, or two players, or three players, or four players. Huh? Because you're cool. not. So I was so I was looking at it, and it says, "Can you can with one deck? Can you play with like three or four people, or is it just two yep. people?" Cause, okay. Because uh, like on the on the I don't know if this is just sales stuff on the Amazon page. It was like, you know, one deck for two people and two decks for for yeah, like, so four people. Yes. Says um, you yeah. get. You need all the pieces if you're going to do okay. four, four players. So if you're going to play with like you and maybe you're older, there's a lot of things. So you need like you can't play with a three year old. Like even my ten year old sure. that came oh, up yeah, in the middle. Yeah. Like it's a little more complex than that. So um, so for, so you, like pieces, you get additional threat counters. You need a second box or buy them separately. Um, you don't technically need it to do it like you can replace like you don't need the threat counter but you know so you can buy one box and play it and have fun playing it like that and a lot of people do that and then that's it but Mm -hmm. i mean it's been it it releases a new scenario every every couple of months so there's actually you can play over 120 different scenarios in the game you know so there's there's just so much content yeah each scenario is is standalone like right you play it like grants like an hour and then together, the the scenarios kind of form like an overarching story. I see, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Like they a lot of times relate to each other. Okay, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's very very cool. We like it. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. You guys started You've a podcast. Definitely, you definitely piqued my interest. <laughs> yeah, I'm very curious. Yeah. yeah, well, we like. I mean, we just we like doing. Uh, you know, we we usually play like simpler board or card games like with our with our kids, um, but. Uh, 
But I mean, I like the idea of maybe doing something a little more, you know, a little more intense, especially if it's involving Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Anything, yeah. anything to, to shove Lord of the Rings down my kids' throats. <laughs> I'm all about it. So. Uh, yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah. The, the, yeah. The, neat, the neat part about it is is that I feel like the game also didn't hold anything back. Like at the beginning, like mm. in the very first box, you get Aragorn as a hero and you get Nazgul as enemies. Like they're not, they weren't trying to do stuff to like, oh, buy more. You know, it's like, here's, sure, yeah. here's some really quality stuff from the beginning. So that's well, awesome. I, Very cool. I would love to sit here and talk to you guys all night, as <laughs> evidenced by the fact that I did not let Ted or Grant talk hardly at all this episode. But um, I think I've though. talked more this episode than I have done in the past thirty. Yeah. Wow! Wow! Okay. <laughs> well, we just uh, we really appreciate you guys coming on, and uh, you know we like to we we have a lot of guest episodes. We love it when people come on, so we really like to just. Yeah. Uh, let let them run the show because it's 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 so great for us to you know get to especially you guys get to pick your brains on some of this stuff and I know our fans really appreciate it too because uh, to to play the game you know the foundation is like being a Lord of the Rings fan you got to be a token mm-hmm. fan that drives mm-hmm. so many of the people to play that's where it starts yeah. um, so this stuff is just we we eat it up like we love it. <laughs> So awesome. thanks. Fantastic. Yeah. It was our pleasure. Our pleasure it was really, yeah. really fun. I'll be honest. I had no idea what to expect when John mentioned this to me and I was <laughs> like, okay. I mean, it was kind of my same reaction when he kind of broached me about doing the Tolkien road podcast. I was like, okay. And I mean, 181 yeah, 181 episodes episodes later, episodes later, here, so. yeah, exactly. So this has been a blast. She's, and just, a, she's just along for the ride. Just along for the ride <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a good place to be. I think I'm sure. going to just take out your new motto on the podcast. Is it, well, Greta, is, is we, still along Grant for Grant may have copyrighted it. So <laughs> Maybe. we need I mean, to I, check I, with him. I, I don't want to be too cavalier about stealing it from Grant. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm fine with it. Yeah, right. cool. thanks. Grant, yeah, go feel free to do this. But uh, it, again, it's just been an amazing time, and I just love talking to you guys uh, and getting to know you guys as podcast. Like, like I said, I just feel like I've already uh, I've been watched your episodes, and I highly recommend it for anybody in the in the Lord of the Rings LCG community to do it. Tolkien Road Podcast. You can find it on all the podcatchers out there, and they have a Facebook page, and they have all these ways to get a hold of them and they do haikus and they play Rochambeau on air. Like it's just a very down to earth, real easy podcast to get into. So, well, I know what I'm going to be doing tomorrow before on my way to work. Awesome. <laughs> and you're going to work and that's amazing. Yeah. Grant, you amaze me. I would be, I would be taking tomorrow off. I would have already called in sick and been like, <laughs> unfortunately I wasn't at work today. So I can't kind of so <laughs> well, hopefully we can keep you awake on the drive. <laughs> yeah, and maybe at your desk too. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, God, so I'll be awake. <laughs> he's a security guard. He said so. Um, oh, very cool. Okay. Yeah. Very so, cool. um, yeah, you gotta stay awake. We'll. Uh, We'll yeah. definitely keep you guys in mind and maybe in another year or so uh, when we're not doing couples February, we'll just have you back on. And John, you can talk about your favorite card once you buy the game and play the game. And Greta, well, you can do your own show and you can talk about your favorite card, which is probably going to be Bomber, right? He counts for probably. two. Probably. So like, <laughs> anyway. like, like. <laughs> All of this. Although this... it might be Faramir. It could be Faramir. I, oh, Far- have, a little, I have a little bit of a thing for Faramir. So, yeah, well, anyway. Mo- most, wim- there, most women do. Um, well, and actually, most men too. Yeah, <laughs> Armir is just a good dude. He's just a all around dude. good dude. Yes, yeah. yes. And yes. in the the most well, the most played version of Farmir is released in the core set in that first thing that you do. So, like I said, cool. they don't pull any punch. Anyways, okay. But, Very good. Um, anyways, guys, thank you so much for joining us on Card Talk. Uh, that was our we, pleasure. Yeah. yeah. So, um, thank we'll, you for uh, having us. Thank you. Yeah. So we'll tune in and we'll see. You again next time and uh guys out there in whatever world you guys are in enjoy and i hope you guys i don't know even know what i'm saying here in my clothes because i'm so star starstruck it's like <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. not really starstruck but i'm so like excited to have these guys on my on my show so anyways oh. join us again as we talk about more cards from the game have a good night
And if you're interested in finding this or any of our back episodes of Card Talk, feel free to search YouTube where you can find our flagship video episodes with the username Card Talk 2018. Or you can search the RSS feed, cardtalk2018.libsyn.org, for our extended audio versions of our podcast. Or you can find us on Facebook at Card Talk 2018. And if you have any questions for Grant or myself or for both of us, feel free to email us at cardtalk2018 at gmail.com.